for a planted aquarium hobbyist or uh, for any aquarium keeper there is a myth and there is a fear built over a myth that if you have phosphates in your aquarium it's really dangerous in this video we are going to talk about the importance of phosphates in planted aquariums what level is good if you don't have uh, the ideal level what's going to happen in your tank and your plants now we are going to quickly cover the importance of phosphates in planted aquarium let's have a look at that Phosphates. We all know uh, we are adding phosphates into planted aquariums. So adding macro elements, right? NPK, we all know NPK, 1, all these names, you know, the macro elements comes and we do add uh, phosphates into our planted aquarium. That is on one side. On the other hand, we do see that, uh, you know, uh, beginners to intermediary hobbyists tend to blame phosphates for most of the algae. When an algae comes, Immediate response is, oh, nitrates are high, phosphates are high, without understanding the basics. They do add phosphates, at the same time, they do blame phosphates for every kind of algae. Now, the tank that you are seeing behind me, it has got some green dust algae. Yes, we have to blame phosphates for that, but not because of excess phosphates. It's actually because of deficiency in phosphates. So, phosphate deficiency is causing this, you know, green dust algae. Not only that, let's talk a little bit about phosphates and it, its importance for plants. Phosphates, if you have to say the most important reason that you should understand for maintaining phosphate levels is that it's actually the, you could call it as energy for plants. Now, we need energy to do any sort of activity. We need energy to do any basic activity that we have, or we are supposed to do. Similarly, if plants need to mobilize uh, elements, if plant needs to, you know, photosynthesis, for all these basic activities, they need phosphates. What we do, we install a great filter, we install, we put a lot of uh, superb media, we also top up the filtration process by adding some absorption resins or specific phosphate, uh, you know, reduction or phosphate uh, absorption media and make sure the phosphates in water column inside the tank is not much but in the process we do tend to forget the importance of phosphate and we we make sure it's close to zero or 0.2 or something like that that's that's really not correct the ideal range that you should maintain uh, in the planted aquarium is at 0.5 to 1 ppm this is the ideal range you have to maintain quite often what we do we test uh, all sort of other parameters like nitrates you know ammonia nowadays gh kh and all but we tend to forget about phosphates and most of us don't test phosphates at least the the beginners to intermediary hobbies we need to do that because the the too much focus in filtration too much focus in water change too much focus in reduction of certain elements to to make sure algae is at bay is resulting commonly resulting in this particular phosphate deficiency now, if phosphate is deficient, you must understand that you will see stunted growth in plants. Plants will be just like that, you know, they don't grow. You will see larger holes in plant leaves. Uh, if pinholes are symptoms of potassium deficiency, larger holes are symptoms of phosphate deficiency. We can also see uh, hobbies complaining about leaves are falling off. Uh, you know, we have bite sort of uh, marks or it seems like leaves are bitten off by uh, fishes or other you know, occupants inside the tank. All these things should be attributed to phosphate deficiency. You would have already understood that identifying phosphate deficiency is really easy. But what are we doing about that? We always somehow believe that phosphate should be reduced and we leave it there. It shouldn't be the case. If you are serious about maintaining the health of your plants, if you are serious about you know, getting rid of this uh, uh, common green dust algae, I would recommend you to check your phosphate levels. Make sure that it's maintained at least like 1 to 5 to uh, nitrates or 1 to 10 to nitrates. Uh, to simplify it, you should have 0.5 to 1 ppm. 
now how can we do that commonly you do uh, add uh, phosphate like i said by adding macro but do test and if you find that phosphate levels are getting reduced because phosphate gets absorbed very quickly if you see such a uh, scenario i would recommend you to add phosphates inorganically through phosphate nutrients you know uh, something like aquavascular p boost we do recommend this uh, phosphate supplement because uh, the formulation is most bioavailable from aquavascular it's made in india as well do add p boost kind of products and maintain the phosphate levels now there is another myth connected to it people do say that we quite commonly if you have large amount of fish uh, you know stocking inside the tank and if you add good amount of fish food it's going to supply phosphate one need to understand that phosphates inside the tank are in two forms right one is organic and inorganic plants need inorganic form of phosphates so from your fish uh, uh, waste and the fish food waste what the tank gets immediately is the organic form of it and bacteria needs to convert that into inorganic form it takes time and also any which case uh, the amount of phosphate supplied by these uh, things are very very immaterial so if you are serious about maintaining the uh, maintaining phosphate levels you should look at inorganic form and the way to add inorganic form of phosphates is by adding these kind of uh, p boost kind of additives i'll see you in the next video and until then bye bye